Welcome back to the show where we run you through all the Dolphins news you need to know. Um, so let's get into the box score first and foremost. Um, obviously your final score for Sunday's game was 41-17. to 17, um, And there's not much to really... I mean, we have a lot to go through on today's show. I mean, we're going to go through just about everything. Most of it's going to be the future of the franchise. Obviously we're going to get into fan questions. And I'm sure we're going to have some... Pretty outraged Dolphins fans out there. This was an embarrassment to the franchise. We are one in ten on our la- or eleven. Wait, one in eleven on our last uh, twelve road games. The only win that we have right now is against the Jets. And I mean, say what you. I mean, obviously division games are not easy, but that seems to be the only place we can win a road divisional game. Period. If you think about it, over the last eight years. If you look at our records on the road against divisional opponents, other than the Jets, we can't win in New England and we can't win in Buffalo for some reason. Well, the New England, okay, nobody can win in New England. I, it's not some reason. Obviously, Bill Belichick, Tom Brady. But you look at, like, I mean, we've lost to Thad Lewis and, and EJ Manuel on the road in, in Buffalo, dude. Tyrod Taylor, we were, we, it was like he was babysitting us on the road. So we've had struggles for a long time on the road. Before Adam Gase got here, it's still happening. And it's not just into the division. It's obviously just everybody else. I mean, the closest road games that we've had this year have been against Cincinnati, which we should have won that game if it wasn't for two terrible decisions by number 17. The other one was against the Colts, and that was just a heartbreaker, obviously with the Andrew Luck scramble at the end. Um, So... Yeah, it's it's tough. We're at we're we're at Cleveland Brown level terrible on the road right now. We're, dude, it's not we're not even just losing. Okay, those two games, like I just said, those are exceptions. Other than that, something about primetime games. Granted, most of our primetime games for some reason have not been in Miami. Um, but it's something about primetime games and road games for this football team, we get smoked. And it's it's an, it's ridiculous. I think all of it, dude. We haven't had a blowout win all year. All of our wins this year have been one possession, even against bad teams like Buffalo. Like that was all. That was a. You can make an argument that we should have lost that game. That game went down to the wire against Josh Allen in the league's worst ranked def or offense. We gave up 400 yards to that team. Since they've played us, they scored 14 against Detroit. Would they score like 21, 24 against the Jets? Like, and granted, I don't think what they, they didn't score that many points, but I don't know what their yardage total was, but it couldn't be great. It's just, it's getting frustrating, man. I don't know why we play so bad on the road. I mean, you look at all, all of our blow I mean, we've been getting smoked against Houston, smoked. That had to, that happened to be a double whammy primetime game, and it was on the road. It's, it's not even that we can't win on the road. It's that we're not competitive. That's why I say it's Cleveland Browns level bad. It, we're not even competitive in these games. We were down 21 nothing in the first three drives of, this, of, of the football game. We were, we were, we were down three, posi- three touch, full touchdown possessions without even a you know, batting of the eye. You would think this team is 1-15 sometimes. That's how bad they play. I mean, there are moments on offense and defense where, you, as a fan, you just literally have to scratch your head because you, you cannot believe what you just saw. And that happened... Listen, this defense was so unprepared for this game. We're going to get into that here in a second. I just wanted an overall... V, just, this is why, what I think of this game. It was an utter disgrace. We just, listen, we just beat New England. New England spanked this team. Bad. This team is not... This Vikings team is not good. They're 6-6. Six and six. They're seven and six thanks to us. That's no accomplishment though, because we can't we can't buy one on the road. We're a great home team. Sorry, I'm burping a lot. We're a great home team. I mean, we're like a really one of the best in the NFL. But for some reason, when we go on the road, I don't know what it is, man. You know. You. I, to be honest with you, if it's because defense needs, I mean, defense, you have to have a good defense to win on the road on a consistent basis. 
if you can't win on the road at all, then that means you really are getting behind in games, and then the crowd gets behind it. We get down to these games so fast, it's like ridiculous. I mean, we lit, we show up to the building, and we just get knocked over like a bunch of pinballs. It's 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 so frustrating, dude. Listen, we we came back in this game, and we're gonna get into that. But it's it's honestly it's a disgusting disgusting thing as a Dolphins fan to accept that we're one in twelve or one in eleven or whatever it is. One, in, I think it's one in eleven. Uh, if I'm, you know, somebody can tell me down in the comment section below if I'm wrong. Um, but because I, I actually want to know the stat, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. You know, the third down issues continue to plague us, but that has nothing to do with Tannehill. It, I mean, the offensive line is bad, but we're consistently in third and longs. We're going to get it because I'm getting too far ahead of myself here because I was just about to talk about the personnel grouping, which was, you know, for, some of it was I liked and some of it was just really bad. So let's get into this game. Let's start with the offensive side of the football. Again, your final score, you guys already know, 41-17, to another terrible, terrible road showing. Ryan Tannehill finishes 11 for 24 with 108 yards, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. By the way, the receivers played like a bunch of garbage pail kids in this game. Danny Amendola had three catches for 30 yards. For He averaged 10 yards a catch. He played terrible. There were two catches that he should have had easily. Uh, Kenyon Drake, three catches for 28 yards. He averaged nine a catch. Should have had a touchdown, but Tannehill didn't see him. M- Mike Gesicki had two catches for 23 yards. Well, I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know whether to blame Adam for his lack of production or blame Mike. I honestly don't. Kenny Stills has one catch for 17 yards. Bryce Butler had the best play by any receiver of the day. And Kenny's came in, in garbage time. Bryce Butler had the best play uh, of any receiver of the game. Just repeating myself again. Uh, but it was on third down, I think, and it was a really good play. He should have had two third down conversions, but you know, got unlucky on the first one because he was out of bounds, unfortunately. Uh, it was a really good, really good throw by Ryan. So let's talk about the passing attack. It was it was terrible. I you know, it's hard to blame Ryan because the pass pro was so bad. It was so bad, dude. It was so so bad. This brought me 2013 flashbacks. If you guys remember 2013, this is what it was like every with Billy Turner and Dallas Thomas. This is what it was like every almost every single week. Ryan was getting put in a body bag for God's sakes. And people wonder why he's falling apart like a gingerbread man right now. The interior of this, dude, Juwan James, not only did the interior get abused in the running game, there were a couple of good runs here and there, but not only did the interior get abused, but the tackles got owned themselves too. They're, they're, they're going up against two really good players, obviously, um, in Everson Griffin and Daniel Hunter. Laramie Tunsil has not, I don't think, he may have given up one against New England on a blitz or something like that because he, you know, the, un, the intelligence of this, I don't know who to blame. Because we we can't we can't block a blitz to save our lives. Literally, we are the, probably the worst team in the National Football League at that. But my point is, is you know, Lambie's played well all year. He's one of the best left tackles. He's going. He should go to the Pro Bowl. He should be on a first team all. In my opinion, I mean, I this is the only um, straight up uh, sack he's given up that I can remember all year, and he's played amazing. But he got he got. He looked like an idiot. I mean, he looked terrible this game. He looked terrible this game. Jawan James continues to be like really good at some t- one game, and then terrible. Like he could not be worse the next. Like sometimes you just got to scratch it. Running the ball with these uh, with these tackles, either one of them is is just terrible. Laramie give up gave up one of. I mean, he literally just he didn't even get his hands on Everson. One play. Don't even get me start. I mean, so we'll get into the defense here in a second. I almost almost jumped ahead. But the offensive line played terrible. And both, listen, we had a couple of good runs. Uh, and Kalen Bosch came in and did his thing. He's obviously super talented. And we, all, we already knew this. We already, If you've been keeping up with really anything Dolphins, he's been dominating in practice. He dominated in training camp. He just hasn't gotten the ball that much. And he dominated in this game. I mean, he had 12 carries for 127 yards and that what, huge, huge touchdown. He played really well. For his first, you know, major role in an offense. But the pass protection was terrible. The receivers weren't getting open. Tannehill missed. Um, he only did, to me, to be honest with you, he only messed up really bad once, and that he missed Kenyon Drake for a touchdown. But, but it, you know, Ryan talked about it after the game. He's like, if I just got more time, and he needs to be more candid with some of this stuff. 
if if he got more time, Ryan said, if uh, he got more time, then uh, you know we might have been able to hit some big plays. He's right. If you, there, I mean, watching the game, you could tell uh, the 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 sack that Anthony Barr timed up like perfectly. Danny Amendola was wide open on that pass. Uh, Kenny Stills, there was a couple times where he broke up and downfield as well, and Ryan just didn't get enough time to get it to him. So, the, I mean, the offensive line, to me, the front is the reason why this offense played so bad. Um, it was just so bad. They got their, they got, they got their, uh, I mean, they got straight up slapped in the face this game. It was embarrassing to watch. So let's get into the, uh, I guess the running game, again, we just talked about Kalen. I thought, you know, we knew this, him coming out of San Diego uh, State. He's a great, he's a very talented player. Um, we He was great in preseason. Again, if you've been keeping up with some of the, the things from the Sun Sentinel and stuff like that and practice updates and stuff of that nature, he's been playing very well. And it was nice to see him finally get some carries. Obviously, Frank going down with the injuries is tough. Uh, Brandon Bolden, Bolden continues to, every time he carries the ball, just does something positive with it. We ran a little, you know, option pass with him and uh, a little trick play, and he could, you know, there was nothing, he couldn't get it to him, and he weaved his way for 12 yards. Uh, Kenny Drake did not touch the ball but one time in the running game. For some reason, huge question mark there. Tana had one carry for one. So there, there's your running um, stats right there, if in case you were wondering. But let's get into the coaching side of this. I felt that we were very ill-prepared for uh, Mike's Bloods package this game. I felt like we, we did a terrible job of making sure Ryan... Because we knew... We were, listen, what Adam did was... He put a bunch of people, obviously, to block. We had, like, three receivers out there. Like, hopefully, hopefully we get enough time to get it to one of them. And they run a good route, and they get open on, on one of their corners, right? Why? Did, listen, they sent the kitchen sink and everything that comes with it a lot in this game. And they do that constantly. They switch their blitzes up. You know, they overload this way. They fake it and overload the other way. They do this. the Ravens. It's very Baltimore Ravens-esque. They can try to confuse the quarterback as much as they can. They're super aggressive. And they have really good players on the back end to do that. Um, Harrison Smith takes full advantage of that. He's constantly moving around. But I felt like, you know, instead of just make you know, which Adam has done, he does this to Todd Bowles all the time. Um, that's how we usually handle zero man blitzes or when someone's, you know, running a pressure of any kind that's sending that many people, usually that's what Adam has done throughout his entire career. But in this game, you know, I felt like we could have gotten some things to the running back. We have really talented receiving backs. You, th- you know, you talk about Kenny Drake, Kalen Blage. We should have utilized them more in the game plan, I felt like. I felt like the game plan was terrible. Uh, I just felt like we could that maybe that was an area that we could have taken advantage of. Because there was a couple times where Ryan, you know, had a hot read. And, and he made it, and Kenny made the guy miss, and he was up the field. You've seen, I mean, if you watch the Rams game that the Vikings has, had played, the, the New England game, they struggled to carry, uh, to cover the running backs in space. Not, I mean, Kenny Drake is as good as Todd Gurley is as a, as a receiving running back. Kenny's every bit of that. If not better, he's. I think he's a little bit smoother in the open uh, field when he catches a pass. Like, he's very James White-esque. I think James White's probably the best receiving back in the league. Kenyon's right up there with Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, and all those guys. I just felt like the game plan wasn't very good. There was a lot of times where we had a one receiver set, and we were in the shotgun, like an unbalanced look, and we tried to run the ball. I really don't. I can't really remember that's worked worked all that well for us. It just. It was very disappointing. I. I. You know. It was very vanilla, you know, we really tried to come into this game running the ball, but I felt like some of the things that we tried to do to mix it up and, and you know, sprinkle in there weren't good enough. Uh, it just wasn't, it just, it just wasn't very, it just sucked, dude. We basically had Ryan back there as just, uh, like a, like a shooter's gallery. Like, it was bad, it was really bad. Like, we just didn't give any help. I felt like we just didn't pre- prepare enough for the blitz. Uh, you know, Mike Zimmer's defense, which is infamous at this point for that it just was disappointing um and again nobody played well it's not adam's fault to the offensive line like i just said kind of contradicting myself a little bit here but he you know if adam if ryan would have gotten more time but again like i said in the counter to, again, in my count, counter that is you should have prepared more we should have been better in the quick passing game draw something up if they're sending so much heat i don't care if it is third and long i don't want to get sacked and then give them good field position which is what happened every single time we lose 10 yards uh, Marcus Sherrill's is running down the sideline. 
at least give us something. Even if all, they, let's say they all run six, seven, eight yard out to the short of the first down. Do it. Make somebody miss. You never know. You know, we just let Ryan back there. You know, he was bait. He was just, you know, and we, he never does that, dude. If it's third and 15, third and 13, we never give our receivers run after the catch uh, 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 opportunities. It's either always a screen or a run or a draw. It's never anything like that. I feel like that that would be a good, at least try it, of a solution to our third down issues. And Tannehill's a really good rhythm quarterback. So, I don't know. It was just really, really bad. It was really, really, really bad. Uh, and I don't have to, I mean, obviously everybody knows that. It, it, it just was, it was just very disappointing. Um, I forgot what I was about to say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It just, you know, in, in, in a game, in today's game, and listen, this team is very injured. Who knows what this team could have done with some, just some of the players. I'm not so, we, you, you're, you're not, look at the Colts, man. They're, ter- they're, they're ringed up all over the place. You're not always. You're not going to have it perfect all the time. But to some of these key players that we lost are really. It really does hurt, and we we haven't done a good job of overcoming those injuries. But my my point was, I do defend Adam a lot. I I, I think he's a great. I love him as a coach. I think he's a great coach. No other Miami coach has brought consistent winning in any department. He's brought a really good home field advantage here. He's the culture is completely different, and I'm not in that locker room. But from what I'm reading from reporters around beat writers it is different so there is a change that has happened my thing is it's the personnel whatever we need to do to to improve that we need to do it this off season so yeah but my point was is i i do i do um defend him a lot and uh you know and and, i don't know if i'm repeating myself but um it's my dog's what was I about to say? Oh yeah, the passing game. Like every rule in the like, watch every dude. Watch Kansas City. Watch L. A. Watch any team. Watch the teams that we play and the calls that they get. Like we don't take full advantage of, of the rules like some of these other teams, which is really frustrating. We're not as innovative. It's like, dude, listen, man. Like the the rules are all for the offense to win. If you look at our league rankings on offense and defense, they're terrible. Like I said. We should we should be a one in fifth like we shouldn't win as much as we we have been. That's why all of our wins have been one possession games. We have playmakers on this team, or we wouldn't win this win as many games as we do. We have people that can make game breaking plays. That's what a playmaker is. We have plenty of them. We're just not consistent. We we'll, we'll, it's like a flash in the pan. It's frustrating. And like I said, I d- defend Adam a lot. I, I, st- I stand by him as a coach. I think he's a, he's a very, very, very... He's the best head coach we've had here in a very, very, very long time. And we can still finish above 500, which hopefully we do. And we should. We have two pretty bad teams that we're about to play. Um, and we're, one of them is at home. And hopefully we can get one road to win and, you know, and beat the Bills at the end there. But again, like like I said, I do criticize him a lot, but or not criticize, I defend him a lot. But I, I, did, I did not like the game plan for this week. Didn't I, I? We have to do something, change something. Whether that's Tanhill and whatever it is, we got to change. I don't care who was starting a quarterback though in this particular game that we would have lost because it, that's how bad a pass pro was. Unless we had like Michael Vick back there or somebody with elite elite escapability like Russell Wilson is the only way we could have possibly be, been even competitive in that game. But we just... Because we could have probably bought time and, and found some people downfield. Who knows? There was also a lot of bad calls in this game uh, just to clean up the offense. A lot of face max penalties, penalties that were not called, uh, which is weird. But they got every call. I think they got... We, we had one face max that they noticed. I don't know. It was just... you know It wouldn't have mattered anyway, to be honest with you. All right, so let's get it. This is this is where I, this is where I really want to get into the nitty gritty. This defense is is so ridiculous. All right, Kirk Cousins finished with four, fourteen of twenty one for two hundred fifteen yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Dalvin Cook finished. Okay, let's let's start with the receiving time. Tyler Conklin f- led the team. Tyler Conklin led the team with Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs on the team. Led the team in pat uh, in in reception or not receptions. But in receiving yards, 
with 53. Stephon Diggs had four catches for 49. Aldrick Robinson, two catches for 44. Dalvin Cook, one reception for 27. Kyle Rudolph, three for 23. Adam Thielen had two catches for 19 yards, ladies and gentlemen. Are we playing in the 1980s right now? Because we just got blown out by just just them turning around and handing it off. Not even the 80s, the 70s. Is that is that is that how far we have to go back? What team in today's NFL is getting blown out 41 to 17 with their top two receivers, whose by the way their names are Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen, and their tight their blocking tight end leads the team in receiving? How many teams are getting are getting 41 to 7? We're the only defense that would give up 41 points to a team like that. Here, here, here are your final stats for the for the for the Vikings offense. Dalvin Cook, nineteen carries, one hundred and thirty six yards. He averaged seven yards a carry on the ground and two touchdowns. Latavius Murray, fifteen carries, sixty eight yards. Stephon Diggs, one carry, eight yards. Kirk Cousins, five carries for seven yards. This defense continues to be ill prepared. We play the Saint dude. They were motioning at him. This is how disrespectful. They didn't care. Dude, I, schematically, we didn't change it, by the way. So our scheme is so bad. We are so wide of the tackles. Our, our defensive ends cannot stop the run at all. They cannot set the edge. Our interior of our line is, is, is just there's It's just bad. I can't even remember. I was, I was about to, oh, yeah. They, they were so disrespectful. The first quarter, watch, watch all of their... Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, my thing messed up. Watch all of their big plays. They constantly had Adam Thielen motioning into the back. This is what the Patriots tried to do with Cordell Patterson, by the way, but TJ McDonald pretty much destroyed it every time. They motioned him in the backfield as an extra blocker, very like what Larry Fitzgerald used to do in Bruce Arians' offense and Heinz Ward used to do in the Steelers' offense. That's basically what they were doing Adam, Th- Adam Thielen, but it was even more disrespectful because I think they had three t- they, it was a, it was a jumbo set. They had three tight ends, they had, and, and then the other receiver... They only had one receiver wide, and we still couldn't stop it. And, and that and that was the run. Those were the runs that were gashing us the most. And that's what we struggled against Detroit and Carry On Johnson. We struggled in, in 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 Houston with that. The Jets tried to do it. We couldn't. They couldn't do anything with it. The Bills tried it. They couldn't do anything with it. The uh, the Patriots tried it last week. They they couldn't run the ball at all. So what makes this game different? The coaching is so bad on that side of the football. Our defensive coordinator is terrible. He doesn't switch his fronts at all. He blames it on the players for his stupid ideas. Look at an overhead or coach's film picture of how this defensive front lines up. And it's like, are you, you got to be kidding me. The only way that is acceptable is on third and long. We're pass rushing. That's what the wide nine is anyway. Where, where everybody's going upfield, where pass rush, it's super aggressive every single down. That's so stupid. It doesn't work for this defense. It doesn't work for any defense. The Eagles try to run it. They're getting killed. Obviously, there's a lot of injuries there. But they have an offense that can actually keep up with other teams. Our offense is just like a, is like a dead pickle on a surfboard. This defense continued, dude. We when we finally switched, it was, it was towards the end of the half. We start, you know, we started to stop the run. I, I, I could have cared less if Kirk Cousins beat us with his arm. And I understand Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen, probably the best receiver duo in the National Football League. I don't care. Let's try to fix the problem. They had a new offensive coordinator who's never called plays in his life. Granted, they just ran it at us the entire game. But he's never called plays his entire life. His first game uh, in the National Football League in December, by the way, he puts up 41 on us. They haven't been able to move the ball. They have struggled to move the ball all year long. And some of and some of that has been against bad teams, dude. And bad defenses. A perfect video and a perfect example of this is the Vikings uploaded a video 
explaining this perfectly. They, they were preparing. I was wondering, it was, it was a late night. It was on YouTube, I, and I watched it just to see what the heck they were talking, you know, whatever. And they are they just say obvious stuff that we already know. But in case you don't know and you really want to know the T, then go and, and check this video. out. It's on the Vikings or whatever, and it's talking about how undisciplined our linebackers are and how undisciplined this defense is. There are there have been multiple times where linebackers have taken the same hole. There have been so many busted coverages. There have been so many missed assignments. In this game as well, there have been, there was a lot. Obviously, Stephon Diggs. There was nobody within 10, 15 yards of him. That's coaching, consistency. That's coaching. Assignments. These 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 uh these um br- these busted coverages. That's coaching. It consistently happens. Nobody is fixing it. And it continues to plague us. You know, Adam Gates gets out there and he wants to talk about how bad, you know, we give up all these big plays. Yeah. Look at the guy who's coaching them. He he can't get it done. We have so many young players in that room. It's terrible. And how the perfect word to describe it is undisciplined. Our defense is stupid. They do the dumbest things. You know, Adam talked about, this is probably a better way to put it. He said, this is what he said, and if you watch the press conference, which kind of is explaining what I'm uh, angry about right now, he said, instead of playing discipline, we're always, sometimes we get away from that, and, and we try to make a big play. Okay. Whoa. That's an, and that's a good, that's a, like, hey, sugar coat, that's a sugar coaty way of saying, we can't, we don't play discipline football. It all means the same thing. And the defense continues to do it. And I don't want to rant anymore about this game. Because we already are. We, we know. We know. We already know. And to be honest with you, this secondary... Listen, I don't know. We got torched by Tom... But that's Tom Brady. And Kirk Cousins was not playing well. Despite his... I mean, he had the, uh, he had the 1970s Dolphins back there running the football for him. So, he didn't have to do anything. And even when they were asking him to do something... It was it was not pretty. Obviously, Mika Fitzpatrick with the sick pick six. And you know what? We'll end it off on that. My point was going to be that we don't even know what the defense would have looked like if they if they were forced to pass it constantly. But this is what we're going to do. Kalen Balaj, we have a lot of young players on this team. Jerome Baker, Kalen Balaj, who, who showed up today. Kenyon Drake, Minka Fitzpatrick, who's legit. Xavier Howard. One, uh, who else? Who, uh, Albert Wilson. Um... Laramie Tunsil, uh, you know, so many really good players that we can build around um, and win in the future with. Very, 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 and I'm forgetting a couple right now, very, very talented, talented players that we can, we, we can that are literally at the top of their games in some, in, 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 in some departments. When you talk about Laramie, he's arguably the best tackle in, in, in the game. Or at least left tackle. You talk about Minka Fitzpatrick, probably the best uh, Swiss Army knife in the National Football League. Definitely the best. We don't know what he could do at free safety because he doesn't really play there. But what a he's a great coverage player. Um, Kalen Bodge looked really good. Um, Kenny Drake, obviously, just a monster. Uh, whatever you ask him to do, he does it very well. Um. So yeah, it, we, there is a lot to build up, especially on the defense. Like I said, Jerome Baker, who's just who's a very good player. Um, he has had a really good rookie rookie, rookie season, excuse me. But and you know, I, I wanted to end off on a positive note, but I forgot two things, and I just remembered it. First of all, T. McDonald, get off. If you're not listen, dude. If you're hurt, then get off the field. He gave up the one of the biggest plays of the game, if not the biggest play of the game, to Aldrick Robinson for the basically the the knockout punch. Um, and he was limping. Like, our free safety play all year has been uh, absolutely atrocious. Um, what else was I going to say? I forgot. I, I, I'm, been, I'm, I'm so upset. It, just, it blinds me. There was some, some other play that I was going to... Uh, oh, Charles Harris. Charles Harris is... Listen, I, I had faith. J.C. Taylor was telling me how he was going to be a pro bowler, telling everybody, not me, like he talked to me personally. But he was telling Dolphins Nation how great this... How hard of a worker, all this other stuff. He doesn't play with any tenacity 
at, and you have to do that at the defensive line position. He doesn't play with any confidence. He doesn't play very well, period. He's terrible against the run. Charles Clay looked like Anthony Munoz out there pushing him. Looked like Gene Upshaw and Art Shell pushing 15 yards down the field, for God's sakes. So, yeah. It, 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 it's, it's ridiculous. All right, so let's get into the... Uh, I'm using this new mic. I, if the volume's bad, I apologize, but I don't know. We're going to have to figure this out. Just tell me if it's too low, too high. Or whatever I need to fix, tell me down in the comment section below if you wouldn't mind, because it, would, it helps out a lot. And if it's fine, then hopefully we don't, you know, nobody says anything. But let's get into the Dolphins news you need to know about. This first news story comes from Bleacher Report, and they listed a starter that every team needs to move on from. The Miami Dolphins starter that they listed is Robert Quinn. The Miami Dolphins sent a fourth-round pick to the Rams and swapped a sixth-rounder to acquire defensive end Robert Quinn in March. In seven years with his former team, he accumulated 62 and a half sacks. Clearly, Miami's front office brought him in to bolster their pass rush. Despite suiting up for all 13 games this year, Quinn has logged just four and a half sacks from 21 from 2012 to 20, 2014. He recorded double-digit totals each season, but those years are behind him. The 28-year-old has once has one solid 2017 um, term. With eight and a half sandwiched between an injury riddled campaign with the Rams and an underwhelming year in Miami. Quinn's cap hit will rise to twelve point nine million next season, but the Dolphins can make a clean cut and regroup the cash. Barring an extraordinary three game stretch, there's no reason to keep Quinn's uh, Quinn past his prime on a costly deal. The Dolphins should, uh, should look to develop 2017 first rounder Charles Harris in an expanded role at defensive end. Absolutely not. He's literally just one of these. De- he's he's re- he's good at pass rushing. Is he? We don't know. He hasn't done it on a consistent basis. I don't even know if we can say he's good at that. But he's definitely not good against the run. I, I want I want all around players, or I want somebody who understands personnel. And could switch personnel on first, second, and third down. I want some hogs in there on first down. I want some K1s. I want some Poes. I want some big boys in there who can stop the run and get us into some third and longs. There's a reason people shift personnel, ladies and gentlemen, and, and, and we do not do it enough. When, when we shift personnel and we rotate defensive linemen, it's not to match what the other, it's to get fresh bodies in there. I want somebody who knows what the heck they're doing. I hope the Jets fire Todd Bowles. I really hope the Jets fire Todd Bowles. Because I'll swoop in there like an American Eagle. If this organization knows anything to do anything right, it would just go get Todd Bowles. Look at what he did to that Houston Texans offense for most of that game. With what he had, bunch of, literally, with nothing almost on defense. He has Jamal Adams, he has Leonard Williams, Jordan Jenkins is okay. That's about it. Tremaine Johnson's up and down. We have to more. Listen, let Todd Bowles come back to Miami and see what happens. So yeah, Robert Quinn, he needs to. Uh, I would agree with that. He's getting paid way too much, obviously, and he's just no, you know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was a long pause. I apologize, but this this next new story comes from. Um. Pro Football Rumors. Uh, Dolphins owner undecided on 2019 changes. The Dolphins are now in the midst of another middling season after falling to 7-7 with with the defeat against the Vikings today. But uh, franchise owner Stephen Ross is undecided whether to make changes to Miami's decision-making structure at the end of the year, a source tells Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk. After losing to the Vikings, the Dolphins have just a 9% chance to earn a postseason berth. According to 538... Meaning, which is a website, I guess. According to 538, we have a 9% chance. Meaning that they face far steeper odds than other contenders for the AFC's... Yeah, do, yeah, of course we do. It's the dumbest thing they could have said. Assuming they don't make the playoffs this season, the Dolphins will have missed the postseason in two consecutive campaigns, following a 10-6 and record and a wildcard berth in Adam Gase's uh, debut in 2016. As Florio notes, Everett doesn't seem to be a problem in South Beach, a definite, po- a definite plus for Adam Gase. While the third-year coach has been effective in his quest to change the locker room culture in Miami. Got the burps bad, guys. But without a sustained record on the field and success, a change at, 
uh, at the top could be possible. Gase presumably won't be the only Dolphins leader who could be out of a job this offseason as Vice President of Football Operations Mike Tannenbaum and General Manager Chris Greer could also be on the chopping block. As Florio indicates, Miami has had trouble adding top-shelf talent at both the executive and coaching level, so the club might not want to move on from its current staff if it can't find superior individuals. Here's the deal. I don't. Obviously, there are certain people that are have to go. Matt Burke is one of them. He has to go. He has to go. Got to go. Chris Greer can stay. I just, I feel like he's done a pretty good job because he's he really doesn't. He's not shaping the team. It's Adam Gase is shaping the team, and, and Mike Tannenbaum is shaping the team. Mike Tannenbaum got to go. He's got to go. He was a success with New York since then. And, it obviously ended in a disaster there. Since then, it hasn't been all, you know, roses and 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 and, and uh, whatever cheese, sugar and cream. It ha- it hasn't been. He hasn't been very good. And and Stephen Ross is a great. In my opinion, he's a great owner. You know, I, I guess I shouldn't say great because he hasn't done anything of merit. But from what I want from my owner is, hey, just anytime we need something, get it for us. And he's done that. He's renovated the stadium. It looks beautiful. He opens his pocketbooks to sign big name free agents. Doesn't ask any questions. Just does it. You know, people want to make a lot of owners. Robert Kraft is just really like you think he has the the football mind of Bill Belichick. He didn't know. He got lucky, guys. He he didn't know that Bill Belichick was going to do what he did. He didn't. Nobody knew. Who nobody knew who Tom Tom Brady, or that Tom Brady was going to do what he did. Nobody, dude. It, it's not. Sometimes it's all. Sometimes it is literally. You think Joe Robbie of all people, who probably cost us a lot of Super Bowls in the seventies, and I say a lot because he he could have cost us one or two. Costing us one is a lot. You think Joe Robbie knew what the heck he was doing when he got Don? No. I mean, obviously Don had a great track record with the Indianapolis before, uh, before he got here, the, the Baltimore Colts at that at that time. You know, going to the Super Bowl, but couldn't get one done. Couldn't get in the. Couldn't get in the bag. But he didn't know what Don was gonna do. Sometimes it's just luck. So I, I don't blame Stephen Ross for this kind of stuff. In terms of changes, like I just said, Matt Burke's got to go. Mike Tannenbaum's got to go. Chris Greer can stay. Adam can stay. I, I, I like both of them. I think they do their job well enough. But they have to make some big decisions in the off season. You know, Ryan. I love Ryan. And I think if the Dolphins do let him go, he will have a successful career somewhere else. But is it time for us just to move on for, to someone else? I, I Listen, if it was up to me, no. I would just build a better offensive line around him. And, and get a better pass rusher. And, and really try to reshape. The, hopefully get someone in here who can run a defense, right? Who, who, who's, who's, who's had success in the past. Like Todd Bowles. Everywhere Todd Bowles goes... He's successful with his defense. You, t- you, t- you talk about New York, he gets them to play relatively well in certain games. But he can't, you know, you can't overcome bad personnel at, uh, at other times. He went to Arizona. Great defense. So, that you know, I feel like Todd could get the job done. And just really draft well in the draft. That's what I would do. But is it time, If the, like, the, the, the feeling around Miami, and I, I don't know, I might be wrong about this. I feel like Dolphins fans are ready just to change it, but I feel like they're stupid at the same time because they got mad. I mean, we were having this conversation about Tannehill like a year in. I feel like we're not the most patient. It's like Dan Bruner or Bust around here. Nobody has had a season like Dan Bruner since Patrick, and then Patrick Mahomes came along. No other quarterback won the MVP at that age. It hasn't happened. So I don't know what is going to satisfy a Dolphins fan in terms of, a, of, a, of a, at the quarterback position. I don't know. But the question I'm like asking here is, is, is it time, just because of the franchise, just because of the fans, is it time to move on? I don't know. I don't know. But if it is, who do you replace Tannehill with? Let's say, that, the, who, let's say we do that. Let's say we get rid of Ryan, and we're staying on the topic of undecided 2019 changes, as Pro Football Rumors puts it. What do you do? I had a conversation about this with my uncle, who's a huge Dolphins fan as well. I said, he did, you know, he's like Tannehill needs to go. I said, well, if he needs to go, and he talked about, and he said, that, just for credibility's sake, I'll say, he said we should keep the defensive side. I said, are you crazy? That's the side that needs to go. So maybe not the most credible Dolphins fan in here, the most pays attention the most. 
But he was saying the same thing about Tannehill and stuff like that. I just don't know if it'll be good enough. You know, I really do feel like Ryan is an exceptional player, and I, I do feel like he will have success. I just said that two seconds ago. But I do feel like he will have success elsewhere if he did leave Miami. And that's going to be hard to... Dude, that's going to be very hard for us to swallow if we see that. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, reality check, stuff around him ain't so great. It ain't great. You know, we're not, we're not exactly, uh, uh, you know, the 49ers out here. But, you know, and then, you know, Dolphins fans would say, well, can we get someone like Aaron Rodgers? Well, those only come around every once every generation. It's like it's hard to find someone who has that kind of, um, you know, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady's, Aaron Rodgers. Those are big Ben, you know. I guess you could put Phillip in there because he, he does elevate the talent around him for the most part. It's just, uh, it's tough, man. Do you see anybody in this draft who has the talent that could become one of those guys? And my answer to you guys isn't I don't. Justin Herbert, Sherbert, Flerbert, whatever, I, Herbert, he's, you know, I, he just doesn't have any, he doesn't have that it factor that you would like to see in someone that you would invest a future first-round pick in. If he was like Carson Wentz or Jared Goff, I'd be like, yeah, let's do it. If he was like Josh Allen, Sam Darnold, uh, Baker Mayfield, of course I would feel comfortable doing that. But do I feel comfortable giving up a future first-round pick for some of these guys? Absolutely not. All of those guys had an in factor to them. Sam Darnold has a great arm, great accuracy, obviously turns the ball over too much at times, but he, he has a great arm. Like, he can throw the ball. Josh Allen, same thing, or Josh Rosen, same thing. Josh Allen, athletically gifted, very, like, big binner, off the Spurger potential. Baker Mayfield has that it factor. He just wins. He's just a winner. Like, Captain America, Roger Staubach-esque kind of stuff. Like, just has that mystique and that confidence that he instills into his team. But there's nobody in the draft that I go, yeah, that guy's going to be something, you know. I don't I don't see it. And maybe I'm wrong, you know. And maybe I'm wrong. But this seriously, I haven't, I haven't seen a draft like this where I haven't been excited about the quarterback class in a long time. Like Drew Locke disappointed me big time. He he's he's he doesn't he just doesn't look very good. Will Greer, I don't know. K- Kyler Murray, I don't think. I mean, he's going to baseball. And, and then you're left with uh Herbert And Daniel Jones from Duke, who knows? It's just like, this year especially, it's like, what do you want to do? To to be honest with you, I love, listen, Ryan can can bring you to the playoffs. Believe it or not, if you build build a good enough team around him and stays relatively healthy, he can win you a playoff game. So would you rather just wait a year for Tua? Because if if two was in this draft, of course I would be like, yeah, we're gonna we can invest, but, or or from from um um Georgia, who I love as well. I think he's he's he he could be a, a very very good NFL quarterback. Both of them, I would you know Jake Fromm. Hopefully, I'm not getting his name wrong. I would invest a lot uh, uh, into both of those guys. But there's nobody like that in this this draft. So I, I just don't understand what the plan would be. Let's we get rid of number seventeen. He's like Kurt Warner. He goes somewhere else and just balls out. Every Dolphins fan would never be able to forgive themselves. Ever, dude. Ever. You would be. Everybody would be so salty about it. I would. I would kill. Like it would. It would hurt a lot if that happened. From, uh, dude, it would hurt a lot. Because we've been waiting for some, for something to happen for many years now. We've went through so many bad organizations. You talk about Joe Philbin's regime, Tony Sperano, Nick Saban. I mean, it's it's been a roller coaster. Um, and yeah, I'm just sick and tired of it. And I feel like Adam Gase is better than all. Better has done a better job than any of those guys. If he if he finishes 500 again, which he has a very good chance of doing, um, that's he's only had one year of losing. And I know we want to get, we wanted to go to the play. I I wanted to go to the playoffs more than anybody, but it wasn't like if, let's be let's be really honest right now. We probably would have gotten beat in the first round, but it is just the just getting there. Obviously, 
And who knows, we might not have, you know. Who knows, you never know. But that's that's the fan in me talking. Just saying you never know. But clearly this team needs has issues and needs that need to be fixed and I, the quarterback position I just don't know if you can because listen I, like I said I'm a Tannehill supporter there but my question to you guys is what do you do if you get rid of him this year if it was last year or next year I could tell you right now what you could do if the the the, the strategy would be you get you 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 sacrifice your future for Tua Jake, Josh, whoever it would have been. But this year, just I don't see it. I just don't see it. Justin does intrigue me, though. I, I He does intrigue me. Like, in terms of... He shows flashes of... um. I just don't know. I just don't know if I'd be willing to invest that much into him. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Obviously, the rumor is Mike Tannenbaum loves him. So, we'll see. He could be in a Dolphins uniform. I don't know if he declared yet or not. I don't think he has. I just realized that I have put the mic way too close to my face. Again, this is a new mic. Don't know how it works. So, this is going to be a learning process for all of us. I hopefully, I don't think it, 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 I think it hopefully hasn't been like this the entire episode. I don't think it has. I've just been moving around a lot, getting emotional. So let's get to the fan queue. Let's get to the fan questions where fans ask questions. Uh, Dolphins fans ask questions. He says, this next, this first question comes from Corporate Gamer. He says, I honestly think we need a new starting quarterback next year because Tannehill is inconsistent and always hurt. We need to draft a franchise quarterback. Now, this is what we were just talking about, Corporate Gamer. Okay, franchise quarterback. Who? Who? Who is the guy? Who is that guy that is your franchise quarterback? If you wrote a name down, it, you know, there's just no one, there is no one to replace him if you wanted to. That's my point. Now, next year, that's a completely different ball game. And it wasn't Tannehill's fault that we lost that game, man. I'm telling you, he put Drew Brees into that game. I, not a very good chance of winning it. Like I said, Russell Wilson could probably have maybe extended some plays, but he's one of a kind, you know. And I don't even, he couldn't have even won that game. That, that's how bad the pass protection was. There's just people were running free. This next question comes from Ron. He says, why wasn't Woodard active, active at, instead of Harris? That's a great question. Uh, I don't know the status of Woodard. I don't know his injury. I don't, or I know his injury, but I don't know what's going on with him. I couldn't, I don't, I couldn't tell you. Uh, Jeremy says, uh, this, this next question comes from Jeremy. He says, Skaggs, which, uh, which played worse, the O line or D? Also, should the Dolphins fire Burke or just wait till the end of the season? Obviously, yeah, we're gonna ne- wait till the end of the season. But as soon as Tall Bowles gets let go, we better fly in there like a. But yeah, Matt Burke needs to go. Which played worse, the O line or D line? The the O line played way worse, and that's saying something. They they played like they were what they weren't even trying. That's how bad that was. Sorry, this mic's going all over the place. So next question comes from Ronnie. He says, what happened to Gotcha? He's not stout versus the run anymore like he was. Is he hurt or something? I mean, he had one... I mean, well... Uh, that's a difficult question. I mean, I feel like it's just the way the defense lines up. Everybody's so wide. You, you really rely a lot on your linebackers to get into those gaps and, and cover up some of the holes that are just naturally there because of the wide nine. It's not so much Gotcha as it is the linebackers. Should Balaj? Okay, this next question comes from Corporate Gamer. He says, "Should Balaj continue to get more carries after this breakout breakout game?" Yeah, for sure. This next question comes from Mark. He says, "Can we have Vance Joseph back as our defensive coordinator?" I don't know. We'll see. I don't know if Denver, Legan Riley. You know, there's Lincoln Riley, there's Jim John. Jim and John Harbaugh that could possibly be out there. There are Mike McCarthy, um, Bruce Arians, who, who, who's throwing his hat in the ring. So there are a lot of really good head coaches, so I wouldn't be surprised if Van, Vance would get let go for one of those guys. This next, this next question comes from Sammy. He says, uh, what do you think about the team's... Uh, what? Uh, excuse me. He says, what do you think the team should pursue for defensive coordinator? 
With this new defensive coordinator will come many changes, hopefully. But what do you think would be the best defensive scheme for Miami to run if all players were to return healthy next season? The thing about Todd Bowles' scheme is he runs a 3-4. And I think even in Arizona, he ran a 3-4. Are there... I wouldn't mind switching to a 3-4. I mean, Jerome Baker definitely can't do it. I don't think he can be a middle linebacker. So that kind of would be the only issue that I would have with it. Um, But maybe he can make some compromises in that area. Maybe find something Jerome that that Jerome could do successfully. I just don't think Jerome's big enough to do it. Um, Kiko, you know, who knows, but... What scheme, whatever Todd wanted to do. If he wanted to keep the... It, I just don't know if that fits his... He might have to make some changes to it, but I, I don't... I think he could probably still keep the 4-3 and still run his defense. You know, he blitzes a lot. He could just use Jerome Baker and a lot of those blitz packages. Maybe he completely changes it. I don't know. But whatever Todd Bowles wants to do, even if he does change it to a 3-4... But definitely stop running the Y9 front. It's dumb. Uh, this next question. Uh, if you want to run it on third down, fine. But not on all three downs. This next question comes from Wayne Tillman. He says, do you agree now that it's finally time to draft a quarterback? Tandle's time is running out. And he's obviously being affected by his injuries. <sighs> I just don't. Okay. Let's say I did. Like I said. Tandle's time is I, I Just like. I don't know, man. He's played very well since he came back. I, I just, like I said, I don't think any quarterback could have won us that game. It was so bad. We gave up three touchdowns. The defense that we were playing is number one on third down. They're a very good defense, very talented. And they were just killing our offensive line. I, I don't think it's the quarterback. I just think, and again, who are you gonna who are we going to replace him with? You know? This next question comes from Kyle. He says, what, what are our three priorities seeing what we saw today? New defensive coordinator. Better defensive ends, better interior offensive linemen. This next question comes from Ron. He says, "Why was Balage in to pick up the blitz when it, uh, when that is exactly why he got kicked off out of the huddle in training camp? Why didn't Gase use veteran Bolden or Drake to do that? I don't know which one. Are you? I think you're referring to the. Maybe it was the." Um, Anthony Barr sack that they should have called a face mask on. Um, I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, Kalen's a big guy. Maybe Gase thought he could do his job, but obviously, like you pointed out, I mean, he hasn't really shown that he could do that. This next question comes from Jack Pack 14 or 18. He says, Another important game, another 40 burger. Something is seriously wrong with this team that they struggle so badly away from home. The coaching and quarterback are not good enough. Go 7-9 and nine and get a better draft pick. I don't know, dude. I don't think it's that. I don't know. But again, you. I guess you could say, then what the heck is it? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. This offensive line clearly is just struggling. Um, I don't know. Corporate Gamer said, this question comes from Corporate Gamer. He says, is it time to fire Burke and Gase after the season? We had many opportunities to take the lead when it was still 21-17. Um, speaking of that run, see, I'm getting too close to the mic again. I, I'm moving I'm moving around too much. The 21-17 to flurry. It really got set off by that punt return. The offense couldn't get anything going. We probably could have kept that drive alive if, if it wasn't for a bad call that they didn't call. It just we played so bad. This next question comes from Jimmy. He says, "Why did Miami bring help in for the O line before the trade deadline? And after our free agent signings got injured earlier in the year, why did Miami bring help in for the O line? There's just really, I mean, no, no. If you have a good offensive lineman, you're not getting rid of him. If you're an NFL team, even if he's a backup, which is not gonna happen. They're too valuable." This next question comes from Bad Bandit. He says, uh, "Bad Bandit." He says, "Do you think Miami will trade Rashad Jones after after this offseason?" Adam Gase said Minka will will play safety full time next season. I don't know. I don't remember him saying that. So one of the three is likely gone. With the issues Rashad had at the beginning of the season and the fact that he had he and TJ are very similar players, I think they will go with the cheaper TJ. I agree with you. I did hear Adam say that he wanted he wants him to play with safety more because of his range. And, and obviously, I, I've said that when we drafted him. He's, he's going to be a great free safety, and I think that's where I would play him for the majority of the time. 
But unfortunately, injuries and Matt Burke's coaching, we haven't done that. We have two strong safeties playing, you know, playing back there, and that's led to a lot of touchdowns. Uh, this next question, box safeties, I should say, just for just uh, just paints a better picture. This next question comes from Bad Bandy. Says, "How much longer will we have to suffer with Burke? Two more games." This next question comes from Ron. He says, "Why did we not stick with the three uh, base three four to stop the run like we did versus the Patriots? It suited our players better that are still healthy." I would have to go back and look at the game. I don't know if we did a base three four as much as we just loaded up. And there were some times where we just had our normal our base defense out there, and uh, because the three four is, it's uh, I would probably call it. I just feel like we've changed the front. I don't know if we we stretched to us three four, but I'd have to go back and look. You might be right, Ron. But I just remember that we loaded up a little bit more. This next question comes from Bad Bandit. He says, "How much uh, long till?" And I don't know why we didn't do that. By the way. Bad Bandit says, heck, his Matt's not very good. Uh, the sister comes from, question comes from Bad Bandit. He says, how much long till the Dolphins front office figures out how important line is? I don't know. This next question comes from Kyle Y. He says, should we draft, should we invest our draft in O-line? I'd have to go and look who's all out there. There's, I don't know if there is a Quentin Nelson-esque guy. I don't know. I'd have to look. Who can, like, change an offensive line? John Nolan, this question comes from John Nolan, he says, Lee Burke in Minneapolis. This next question comes from Ron, he says, the only uh, guy who didn't take Monday off was Minka, and he looked like the only defensive player ready to play. Why Why won't this coaching staff like Odin or Hill tell every player to do what Minka has done? Because you, you can't do that. You can't, you can't do that. Mark says first should uh, if if the, if it was a, if there was a rule that made players do football stuff every single day of the week they would put that rule in. But they can't. It's it is not it's not really I mean it isn't it's not right. I would probably you know you don't need that many days to prepare for a football game. This actually comes from Mark. He says first we don't need a quarterback or a head coach. First, we don't need a quarterback or a, or a head coach. Miami has played well this season considering injuries we've suffered. My question uh, is, should we address the interior off the line of free agency or round one in the draft? we got to do everything we can. This next question comes from Take Me Out. He says, hi, guys. Always look forward to your podcast. You do an excellent job. Granted, the, the offensive line leaves much to be desired, but I really believe that Tannehill is not the answer. I don't see him as someone who elevates his team making great plays. Which is what you expect from a franchise guy, your opinion, thanks. The whole big place thing is uh, interesting. I, I feel like he made a, a lot of big plays in, in the game against New England. That throw to Kenny Stills, the, you know, throw to Bryce Butler. Those were big plays. Um, in 2016, he made a lot of those plays. But I see what you're saying. I just I think it has to do with the road. We got to figure out. We got to bring it. It, defensively is the issue because we give up so many points on the road. I feel like it's the defense, and you have if you want to be a good road team, your defense has to travel. The next question comes from Mark. He says we had uh, we made opposing running backs look like pro bowlers all season. What can we do moving forward to stop the run? Our defensive our defenses has been atrocious for the past three seasons. Yeah, I agree. Um, we just need to get a coordinator. We need to get deeper, more versatile personnel so we can put different fronts and different looks for the defense on different downs just like new england does this next question this next i'm slurring i don't know why this uh this next question comes from corporate gamer he says why didn't we uh why do we suck again i'm sick of getting blown out we just can't win on the road i don't know why it's unfortunate Unfortunately, we record a podcast, and you know, I wish I could change some of the way that the uh, audio came out, but it's gonna be way better next time. I know what I did wrong for some parts of this video, and I'm sure I did it again. I'm holding it. I shouldn't be holding it. I should have it on a desk. That's kind of like it's a, it's a it's a blue yeti mic. I have to have this thing on a desk because if I move it around, I'm getting too close to it. But anyway, that is gonna be it, guys, for this week's podcast. It's unfortunate. Let me know what you guys would change down in the comment section below. Like I said, I. I know for one thing, the interior of the offensive line has to change, and the defensive hold the defensive coordinator situation obviously has to change. So that is going to be it, guys. Uh, I'm Skyxj3. Now we'll see you guys in the next one.